we are recording now. Let me share my screen. Right, you should see my screen now. Welcome everyone. This is the last core interim meeting before the ITF 110 uh, main meeting. And this is an official ITF meeting, so do not well uh, apply. If you are not familiar to them, find some time to become familiar with them. And that said, the main topic for today's agenda is uh, some ongoing work that was started uh, around the ITF online meeting, uh, raised as uh, an element of interest in, in the Lake Working Group about uh, limits in using keys um, in OSCOR and possibly uh, as motivation for renewal. And Ricardo has prepared some slides on this ongoing work. Uh, so please, Ricardo. Yes. <clears throat> exactly, as Marco said, this is about the limits of key usage uh, for OSCOR. And uh, yeah, can we go to the next slide. So basically, this this problem uh, stems from this forgery attack that was discovered against AED algorithms. And because OSCOR uses AED algorithms for uh, confidentiality and integrity, this attack, of course, also affects uh, OSCOR. And like, Marcia, uh, like Marco mentioned, this was discussed a bit during the ITF 109 meeting <clears throat> that it would be good if something happens uh, related to OSCOR and these limits, and it could happen in core. Um, and basically, if this forgery attack is successful, an adversary may break the security properties of the, the AEAD algorithm. And the exact details uh, and more information on this can be seen in this uh, draft uh, would be CFRG AED limits. But the main point of this work would be to that there's a need to describe the relevant limits for OSCOR, uh, how the forgery attack and the limits will affect OSCOR, and you know the necessary steps to take uh, during message processing to take into account that you need to count these limits and uh, have kind of a cap on them. And also, what should you do if the limits are exceeded, basically? So, next slide, please. Rick, Rickard, I think uh, yes. th there is an updated version of the draft. It's it's adopted, and there is a zero one version. Okay, I, so. then good to know. I probably I link to I put the, the older version there. Yeah. I don't know if there. Are, I don't think. I mean, the, the the inequalities you're working on is is probably the same, but there might be some other differences. I don't I don't know. Uh, there may be. I'll, I'll check the latest one. Yeah. Yep. Uh, probably I'll check it at some point. It's just that I, when I copied it, I put the old version. All right. But uh, good point. Good point. Uh, yeah. Next slide, please. So, basically, the limits on key usage, uh, the relevant limits uh, and things you need to count as defined in this uh, CFRG document is the Q value which is the number of messages protected with a specific key, meaning the number of times the algorithm has been invoked to encrypt data with that key. And you have to also keep track of the V value, which is the number of forgery attempts made against a specific key, and that is the amount of failed decryptions done uh, with the algorithm for that key. So in the case of OSCOR, you use the sender key to protect outgoing messages, and you use the recipient key to decrypt and verify incoming messages. And that means that re relevant counters for OSCOR will be, uh, will be uh, counting the number of times the sender key has been used for encryption, and that is counting the Q value. And then you count the number of times the recipient key has been used for decryption uh, and, and you know, failing to decrypt, let's say. And that would be the V value. So next slide, please. And here's an example based on, on the limits defined in that uh, CFRD document. Again, yes, it should be the, the latest version. Um, and the limits depend, <clears throat> depend, of course, on the exact algorithm used. So in the case of OSCOR, I mean, it can use a number of AED algorithms. And the default one is this AES CCM 1664128. And in that case, they define these two limits for Q and V. And that's basically saying like, 
if your Q or V count reaches uh, above these values, um, you may not use these keys anymore because then you may compromise the security properties of the algorithm. And the way to calculate these depend on the assumptions you make on the probability value P. Uh, so for this example, I've taken the P values as defined in this uh, TLS, uh, sorry, DTLS 1.3. And there they consider, yeah, one probability for the Q value and one for the V value. Um, and if you plug this into the formula together with the uh, assumed message length, you can calculate exact limits um, in the case of AES CCM 16, 64, 128. So what you basically end up with is the Q value is, uh, the limit for Q is 2 to the power of 23. So if you have sent and decrypt, if you have sent and encrypted more messages than that, you may not use that key anymore, the sender key. And so that's, I mean, that's fairly high value. It's about half, I suppose, of the of the of the theoretical maximum sender sequence numbers. And in the case of B, uh, the failed decryptions here, your uh, the limit you reach is much lower. So it's uh, more likely here that you would run into that. It's only 112 failed decryptions, and you exhausted that key, and you need to rekey. Um, yeah, next slide, please. Um, just one note, uh, sure. on the values of PQ and PV, uh, when this was discussed in November at ITF 109, I remember Ben Kaduk um, adding on Jabber that it's not super clear in, in details 1.3 either why exactly those values ended up to be picked up. They're probably safe values to be on the safe side, but yeah, it's a bit open if uh, this can probably be relaxed a bit and in the end come up with different numbers. Yeah, that's true, exactly. Like that's the assumptions they made in that document based on, I guess, some safe margin, but definitely more considerations can be put into what are the relevant probabilities um, and possibly, if, you know, it's the fact that it's all score, you know, if that can, can if we can find other probabilities that are uh, different and maybe reach, uh, increase these limits a bit, of course, it still has to be Proven that it's a secure, uh, secure probability, secure assumption. So there's definitely more considerations that can be done on that. Uh, yeah. Hello, hello. This is your. I, sure, sorry, sure. I was thrown out or yeah, somehow uh, left the meeting. And I think there is a plan to start an activity on this. Uh, this is at least been announced. Something to do uh, in in Lake to look at these at these inequalities because they are. We don't really know whether we are close to the limit presumably not and some of the assumptions are really arbitrary in this already in this model for tls so so there might might be other assumptions you may want to do yeah that sounds very interesting exactly so that's definitely worth looking looking more into yeah so it makes a lot of sense to keep core and lake coordinated even more also on this yes yeah definitely exactly it's, it's relevant for both them yeah um, okay, next slide, please. And then there are some open points, let's say. Uh, one of which is that, uh, yeah, so far only the limits for Q and V uh, for AES ECM 6 and 64, 128 have been calculated as part of this work uh, based on those assumed probabilities and the formulas in that C4G document. But ideally, there should be a table uh, showing limits for all possible AAD algorithms that OSCOR can use so that if someone is is uh, reading this work, they do not have to do these calculations on their own, but they can simply look it up in the table and see what is an uh, appropriate limit for their Q and V. And uh, of course, this depends on uh, finding appropriate values for each algorithm uh, to be able to calculate this. So that's one open point uh, that needs to be further uh, explored. Um, another open point is that uh, there needs to be a smart way in the case of constrained devices for efficiently counting Q and V, because the problem is that they will need to save these values uh, in the case of reboot, so that when they reboot, they, they still have those values uh, available if they wish to continue using the, the same uh, security context, for instance, with Appendix uh, B1 of OSCOR. Uh, so they, they shouldn't have to save Q and V for every message because that creates a lot of usage on the on the non-volatile memory. 
but it can be done in a similar approach as it was done in OSCOR Appendix B1, where you only save values periodically, because here in Appendix B1, you also save the sender sequence number, but not for every message, but for you know every X amount of messages, uh, which is more efficient. I see Christian's raising his hand. If you're saying something, we can't hear. Better now? Yeah, now we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the in the case of storing the queue, we should also explore whether it might be sufficient if both parties um do the counting. Um, whether we can put some limit on queue, say queue half and as long as both parties only count their sender sequence numbers up to Q half, then they would not need to to count Q separately, because there can be no message. I mean, kind of adding up. There, there will be at most that many exchanges. Right. So they can cooperatively count the Q up to to the half uh, and half of the limit. Yeah. Roughly bound it to Q anyway. Right, that's a good point. That's a very good point. And we also had some other other thoughts on more efficient ways, like you know, using the fact that I mean you're already counting and saving your your sequence number, so that can be that can also be. So there's definitely more to explore on the uh, you know aspect of how to make this more efficient for master devices. But that may be a, a small solution, like you said, to um, consider that they both count up to half the limit. Yeah. Uh, what can complicate things a bit on focusing just on QF uh, is the non-inclusion of uh, the partial AV in most of responses, right? Yeah, there's also that consideration that for responses, you do encrypt them with your sender key, and they should also be counted as part of Q. So it's not only outgoing messages with the partial AV, you also have to count a lot of responses where yeah, they do not have a partial AV included. That's true. So you know, if, Christian, if how that fits with your proposal. Yeah, that's 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 exactly my point here. Um, as long um, if 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 the if our device can rely on the other party to only produce sequence numbers up to Q half, then we send at most a Q half responses um, on a foreign nonce and at most Q half responses on our own sequence numbers. And thus we produce only up to Q messages with one key. Right, because your point is that for a request, if there's only one response, okay, that may not have a partial AV. And if it's notifications, for instance, multiple responses. They get their own, yeah, anyway. They will have one. Okay, yes, good point. Yeah, that's definitely something to consider. Thanks. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, um, one thing also on, on the first point on this slide, um, Christian, in other works, you, you were considering the registration of, uh, well, a feature uh, of um, an encryption algorithm as, as deterministic, so, something you had in mind for, for COSI itself. If these limits uh, are more general than just for the sake of all score, uh, probably something more to add to, to registration of algorithms. What do you think? Possibly, yes. Yeah. Depending on, the, 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 I think that will depend on whether the PQ and PV values are something that we can kind of globally agree on or whether that will be a per a per application decision and then the Q and, Q and V values won't be generic to the algorithm, but to the application. Yeah, because now, now there are a lot of assumptions um, because of those probabilities and so on, but um, I don't know. I, I suspect these things are really uh, nailed down to the algorithm and not to the fact that the algorithm is used in a score. <laughs> so it, it can be more information to add to registration entries, just like the deterministic feature you you, you thought about. But it's right. probably something for cozy, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. So then, if there's a, a certain Q value for a certain algorithm that can be, you can have that right in the register data. Okay, it's this algorithm and it has this associated Q and V limits. Yeah. Yeah. But you're not, not if the probability depends on the exact use case, because then you can't, you can't define it per algorithm. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, you can go to the next slide. 
and this was another uh, point so that if let's say you consider messages that are replays um now they will of course be reacted because simply because of the fact that they are replays um while if they had if they had been uh, if the a decryption attempt had been made it would have failed and it would have shown that these are actually forgery attempts um, so you know a message may be detected as a replay before the decryption yeah, exactly why it was actually a forgery attempt and you can consider that dtls 1.3 does decryption before the replay detection while in oscor replay detection happens before decryption so it's actually the inverse order there and now the proposal and, and, and the intention here was that um, or the question let's say is that can we safely not increment v uh, if the message is a replay so basically if the replay we never even come to the encryption step so regardless if it would have failed or not we, we don't have to increment it and i think i saw christian do the thumbs up uh, here. it sounds like uh, agreement that's good so replays don't mm -hmm. contribute to to making a key a little less valid right exactly so then a replay would not contribute to the v counter exactly it would just be reacted as a replay and right, no decryption attempt would even be made as it is now yes um, so those are the open issues some of the open issues let's say where we uh, define so far um so is does anyone see any other say big enough open issues or, or important points to consider in addition to this if not you can go to the next slide yeah i just want to see yeah, okay there's a summary sorry I, I, please 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 continue okay i'll continue with the summary we can take some discussion then. yeah so this is the summary next step so basically the the whole point of this is making a document that describes the AAD limits and how they impact OSCOR and introduce this counting of Q and V values for OSCOR. So saying that, yeah, there will be some deltas with the message processing and things you have to take into account now for the counting and also what actions you need to take if the limits are reached, uh, which would basically be that you have to rekey uh, OSCOR. You have to change your uh, sender and recipient keys fundamentally. And currently, there's a number of alternatives you can use to do that. And um, there is also an overview, a short overview of the current alternatives that you can use for rekeying OSCOR, which is essentially you have NDOC, you have the OSCOR ACE profile, uh, you have Appendix B2, and you also have the possibility of doing, I mean, manually doing a rekeying, just changing the, the security context keys manually, which is not very uh, convenient, let's say. Uh, and then next steps, the main next steps or what uh, points that need more work is, yeah, again, adding limits for further AED algorithms, because currently we only consider the score default one and would be very useful to have a, yeah, to try to add more or ideally to try to add uh, for every AED algorithm that OSCORE can use. And the other point is, like we discussed a bit earlier, to try to improve the solution for constrained devices. So it's, not a burden or heavy for constrained devices to use and uh, they don't have to do excessive disk usage or keep a lot of stuff extra stuff in memory compared to uh, let me say uh, the vanilla current or score implementations yeah the next slide please yeah thank you so that was the end of the presentation oh, please any comments or questions are welcome yeah, I, I, I tried to think about this replay before mm -hmm. before decryption. I think that's right. I mean, essentially, if someone would send the same message multiple times and that would never reach the decryption, that should mm -hmm. not sort of add to the count. I think I think that's right. Yeah, because that, that's the that's point. A, like, uh, yeah, if it had reached the decryption, so this could theoretically be a forgery attempt, and if it had been decrypted it would have been, you know, the, the counter would have been incremented. It's just that because of the, you know, replay detection, it won't reach the decryption stage. But yes, I think I agree that it, it makes sense to, to not increment the, the V counter because, in, in fact, the decryption attempt, uh, decryption is never attempted, let's say. 
Uh, and then what, the main missing part is actually these estimates then sort of how, how can we make this study together with people from yeah whoever is interested in, in the lake working group to to get the estimates the reasonable estimates for for this setting yeah exactly uh, how I haven't really thought about who we should how we should make that start we need maybe that's something we should discuss in uh, at uh, at the IETF 110 in Lake, we can bring it up in Lake. See where, mm -hmm. where yeah, because people exactly. think about. Yeah, because it would be nice to do this work jointly uh, with with all the people uh, relevant and interested in this. Uh, yeah. Do you have any early thoughts of uh, what this kind of work should have in mind already uh, to do? Well, to assist ad hoc, to, to help ad hoc. Um, I mean, this this is not exactly ad hoc specific. This is something that we would like to make for which should, I mean, these estimates could potentially be valid for, for DTLS or other protocols as well. So. Oh, oh yeah, the exact numbers. I still think at the end of the day are something related to the algorithm itself, not what yeah. uses the algorithm. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, I guess one. Yeah, of course, the Oscar uses algorithms from Colossi, so of course, the, again, like was mentioned earlier, somehow adding this to the documents related to Colossi you know, or even the Colossi registries, if a, a value can be calculated for each algorithm, that could be an idea. It sounds a little bit more like a draft to me that you have, if you have uh, sort of you've updated the the error. Sort of what you think is the relevant errors uh, or, or probabilities, and then you calculate for for a number of algorithms, and then you put it into a draft. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that could be in um, in, in this work, which or like you said, it depends on how general it should be. Like you said, if it also touches DTLS and, and others, then it would be a very general thing, just on the algorithms themselves. Yeah. Just on the topic of DTLS, um, my understanding. Standing of the drafts that circulated um, on, on during 109 was that uh, DTLS has already ditched the the eight byte tag uh, AESCCM values. So possibly they already made updates based on the on the TLS numbers uh, and and don't use them anymore at all. But I'm not sure. That's kind of what I remember. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so what? Looking it up in the draft right now. At, at least from from TLS, TLS, it's it's depre <clears throat> deprecated. I I don't remember if it's for DTLS as well. So I don't know. I we have to look it up. But but in principle, the what the estimates here is not necessarily bound bound to ad hoc or score. It's more like the algorithms. So it, yeah, like this calculation. Yeah, it's bound to the those probability assumptions and the algorithm. It's not really strictly related to score. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, so the, the current um, the current DTLS draft still allows CCM8, but places this 127 V limit to to the number of failed decryption attempts. 127. Okay. So not 112. They they phrase it as two to the power of seven, and mm. from how I understand that those numbers come to be, it's it does, does it's it's not a little thing of of one more or less, but just of orders of magnitude. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay but definitely it's something to explore further is these calculations for more algorithms, exactly. And then maybe even further thoughts on the on the probability values used, yeah. So do you already have a draft, Richard, or what's, what's... Yes. Exactly. Then there is a uh, version zero, and the intention is yeah, it will be submitted now ahead of the next meeting. Uh, exactly. Yes. Okay. Great. That is the case. Uh, the lake session should definitely be after uh, the first one, of course. But probably we we can manage even to align better uh, during the ITF week. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, these probabilities here are mostly 
uh, as background information at this point, at least for the sake of of core, they can definitely be somewhere else more generically later on. Yes, that's true. That is true. Um, but by the way, just just kind of continuing on the on the train of thought and and that text, um, detail esque in the current draft explicitly says that. Uh, for instance, it might be possible to set a different target for the advantage an attack against based on understanding the constraints. So this is about what we are about. It's basically about what we are doing here, understand understanding better what what can be and then adjusting the numbers. Right. right. So yeah. Open there still too. Yep. Good. Any more? Early feedback on this, or open points that were raised and should have been. Yeah, no further points for me. Then we'll have to wait for the draft. <laughs> yep, exactly. It will be submitted now, uh, very soon, ahead of the next meeting. Great. So this was the the only main discussion topic uh, on the agenda. Um, otherwise, I I could see echo request tag proceeding uh, again uh, in the very advanced stages now. And thanks, Christian, also for replying to uh, John and Med uh, latest revision on your review of new block. Uh, I had one more uh, other point about the the next series. Uh, of interim meetings for, for CORE uh, to resume well after the, the 110 meeting and to not collide like we are doing now with the telechat uh, scheduling of the ISG, which is on, on Thursdays uh, at this time. Uh, we think to move it back, uh, to move the, the CORE interim series back to its original place, which used to be Wednesday afternoon, in fact. Uh, and we left Wednesday afternoon because of a collision of COSI that so far hasn't rescheduled anything yet. So the idea is to move back to um, every other Wednesday at the same time of, of today, which has always been the same time for a long while. Uh, I know we are not that many today. Any big objection or comment on that? Then I think we can go for that slot, but we think of resuming uh, second half of April uh, after Easter, so essentially uh, uh, about two months from now. And that should leave space for six interim meetings uh, before ITF 111. Okay, uh, so I think we covered everything uh, we had in mind originally for the agenda. Anything else you want to discuss today? Yes. Hi. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I was late for this meeting. I seem to have missed a very interesting presentation here. Um, so, um, one thing that uh, um, is relevant for the 110 um, discussion, we, we had this discussion about the, the conflicts uh, we were having, and I have no idea whether that's, there's anything we, we can or want to do about that. In the particular agenda of 110, you mean? Yes. Uh, as you suggested, for core, we can have all the security related topics uh, on the Monday session. At least it doesn't collide with Danish. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't, yeah, discussed, that will help. Yeah, I haven't discussed the agenda with Jaime in detail yet, but uh, I, I did some simulation already and all should fit like last time. I think. Oh, I, you run simulations on the working, working group meetings. That's interesting. I realized that Core really needed that. <laughs> uh, so when approaching the cut of weeks, uh, I have a nice spreadsheet. Thanks for the smile. Uh, I have a spreadsheet where I start listing uh, well, existing documents, possible ones that are around the corner, and the, the likelihood of having a presentation of them. <laughs> so I, I I can of course be surprised after the cutoff, but hopefully not too much. Okay. <laughs> and I have a rough idea. Great. 
<clears throat> okay, so that that doesn't help the the people who actually are interested uh, both in in core and in security. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, don't know how how to fix this. Um, the the other observation is that um, we have uh, Yang Sibo and and Sid now under AD review, mm -hmm. um, but we are not quite there yet with Komai. And and I sent a set of um, items we probably need to discuss uh, to the mailing list a while ago, and I'm wondering how we can get progress on this. Which is basically nudging evil. Yeah, is, is he really the, the the only one who can work on this? Not based on the author list itself, but practically I think so. Okay. And uh, I, I think since he changed his job, is available on Jobbear for what I can see only during the cozy meetings. Yeah. <laughs> so probably yesterday was a good time to... <laughs> To nudge him. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, only via mail. Do you want to send a, a next ping? Well, I wouldn't mind uh, since already I said I already sent one. I uh, wouldn't mind the chairs to do that. Will do. That was for for both Komi and. Well, for Komi, I, I I actually have comments. I I haven't really started looking at Yang Library yet. Uh, okay. But I don't expect there to be big problems. Okay, let's start with Komi then. But Komi had some, some a few things that actually do need attention, and yeah, uh, the with the ID deadline coming up on Monday, uh, I'm I'm already afraid that we are going to miss it. Right. I'll ping Ivo uh, following your thread. Thank you. Sure. Uh, speaking of the upcoming deadline, assuming that we are now in other other people taking the AOB uh, up, um, I'm working through the last uh, to-do items on um, on the resource or resource directory. Uh, if you remember correctly, the <clears throat> the basically the ISG um, points have been cleared out, but we still promised to do. Um, one more update with two open items about the anchor stuff and about the, the freshness topic. And I'll, I'll manage to do those in time, um, but it would help if someone familiar with the topic, basically before it gets all up to the IESG again, uh, could have a look at, at what I've been doing before I hit the button on Monday evening. So I'll, I'll write, out, down, write out a mail on that to the list, but maybe if, if, some, if someone can can arrange an hour, an hour or so to to read probably even more on a half, um, uh, to to read what to read the delta that I'll be pushing with that. Um, that would help me a lot. Uh, about the young core attribute, especially, it's good that you check what Esco thinks about that because I believe he was the one really raising that point and discussing with you on the list, right? Uh, you're talking, you're muted. Sorry, I mixed that up with the with the, the, the pending Yang topics, if that was a comment to that. Um, uh, no, no, it was about the RD. So the, um, there, there are, there are, ESCO's, there are a few of ESCO's comments unanswered, but that is more like um, small changes to the examples. The, the the real the real th the things that we will kind of change more than a few lines um, or add add complete subsections is the topic of freshness and the topic of oh yeah you're right um that's a topic that you the, the anchor thing is a topic he raised but I'm more concerned about the freshness part and that's something that um, yeah and possibly you could um, have a look at from the from the echo point of view for example. Could could you provide me a pointer, Christian? Where um, I should look? I will on on Sunday evening. Okay. Yes, please do that. Okay. Any more points for today?
Good. Then we can close this meeting uh, very much earlier than usual. Have a good cut of Monday and talk to you latest at the hackathon and meeting for 110. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Talk to you Bye. Bye. Bye.